What is compost? Put simply, compost is organic material that has been broken down into a rich humus that is packed full of nutrients, microorganisms, and organic matter. Making your own compost has multiple benefits. It's cheap, it's easy, it reduces your carbon footprint, it increases water retention, and it adds back vital nutrients to your soil, which means you'll have bigger, stronger, healthier, more productive plants for longer. You get all these benefits from your common waste products that you normally just throw away. So whether you have a small town garden or a large estate, everyone should be composting. Today, I'll show you just how easy it is. The first step is to find a location for your compost bin. I'm adding a second one because I go through so much. Ideally, you want a semi-shaded area that doesn't get too much sun. We want the compost to heat up to help with decomposing, but we don't want it to completely dry out. It's always better if your compost bins can be placed directly onto the soil rather than onto pavers or hard surfaces. This will help with drainage and give all the microorganisms and worms in the soil direct access to the compost to start working their magic. Try and pick a spot that isn't too far away from the kitchen because the closer it is, the more likely it is that you'll actually use it rather than putting it into the too hard basket. Now we have our bins in place, we need to know what can go in them. But first, let's start with what shouldn't go in them. Avoid any wheat, meat or dairy, as this will attract all sorts of unwanted wildlife into your garden and can get pretty smelly too. The rest is simple. You basically break it up into two groups, browns and greens. Greens include anything that comes from a plant, such as garden clippings, grass clippings, vegetable and salad scraps, and freshly fallen leaves. Browns include dried leaves, paper and cardboard with all the packing tape and glossy print removed, straw, and twigs or small branches. The ratios aren't super important. Some people say more greens and browns and vice versa. Some even say 50-50. But my personal preference is to fill your compost bin with two parts brown and one part greens. When filling your bins, make sure you lay the two types of scraps one on top of the other to help speed up the decomposing process. To quicken things up even more, you can break the materials up into even smaller pieces first. Your compost always needs to be slightly damp for the microorganisms to be at their most efficient. And the best way to tell whether your compost is too wet or too dry is with the old nose. If it's too wet, the compost will smell really bad. And on the other hand, if it's too dry, it won't smell at all. We're aiming for a nice rich compost smell. So keep an eye on your compost and use your nose. You can give a hose down every now and then when needed. Next, we need to aerate it, which is best done weekly by mixing everything through thoroughly with a pitchfork or compost turner. If you really want to help your compost along, you can throw in a handful of blood and bone and a handful of lime once a month. The blood and bone add nitrogen and phosphorus, while the lime helps combat the acidity created by the decomposing scraps. So that's it. In two to three months, most of your scraps will have broken down and you'll have the most beautiful compost that costs you next to nothing to make. The best part is, your garden will absolutely love you for it. Compost can be used as a mulch for your garden or you can turn it through your soil. This will improve the soil structure and make the nutrients more accessible for your plants. If you have any questions about compost, just leave it in the comment box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Happy gardening. If you enjoy getting out in the garden and want some more tips, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel up here or go and watch another video just here.